one thing that I, I wanted to do is I, I created a little mini app that, uh, a little mini website that has like I think three pages in it. And it, uh, the idea was to sort of bring together a lot of the stuff that we've been talking about. Because we've been talking about this, we've been talking about that, but I don't know if uh, in class I've, I've worked through say a consistent example of this is what I have, here's how I'm using all the different techniques, this is why I've chosen the techniques I've chosen, and so far. So that's what we're going to do today. Uh, I, I posted the example, and we're going to look at it. And uh, keep in mind that, as you know, with any sort of design problem, there's probably a lot of reasonable approaches that you could, you could take with it. All right? So I'm not saying that this is the only way to do it. This is, given what I was working on and what I wanted to demonstrate, the, the approach I wanted to take. So, again, that's sort of the disclaimer. You know, why didn't you do it this way? Why didn't you do it that way? Well, I don't know. You know, I, I did it a certain way to show certain things. That doesn't mean that there couldn't be a reasonable way to do it. Let me show you how it behaves, first of all. And there's a desktop version and there's a mobile version. And then, as you noted, um, I didn't, I actually did not get around to doing this completely, but um, the question came up uh, in my mind, what happens, for example, if JavaScript is not enabled? All right, jQuery depends on JavaScript being enabled, so what if I get to a mobile device that doesn't support JavaScript? What does it look like then? Second question I have is, what if my um, user agent detection doesn't work or misidentifies something as a mobile, I'm sorry, misidentify something as a fool that is actually a mobile device. What happens then? So my code has fallbacks in there so that it gets a certain look uh, depending on if any of those circumstances occur. So let's go and take a look at this. It's always tough thinking of examples. So I think, I think when I left class here on Monday, I was listening to this band and I've been listening to a lot lately. So I thought that I'd make a little tribute website to them. So that's why I picked this topic. Good a topic as any, right? If you're going to spend some time doing it, might as well do it on something you like. So I picked this band. And let's look and see how it behaves, both on a mobile device and on the desktop. We'll go to the desktop first. My goal when we're finished with this example, which we could wrap it up today or we could go on a little bit into Monday, but I want there to be no mystery about why this works the way that it does. All right? I want to make sure that every aspect of it you understand and you can follow. All right. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the website, CISSQL. LorraineCCC.edu, CISS268 slash MJQ. Whoops. And here we go. All right. I didn't spend tons of time on this. I just wanted to give it a desktopy look. All right. In other words, you know, I want to do the anti-mobile design on this one. In other words, there is uh, there's there's uh, a big image in the background. There are there's multiple columns. I want to do like the antithesis of a mobile design. All right. If you scroll down here, you can see there's an embedded YouTube video. All right, and. If you look close, there's that ugly PHP error that you got, all right? That, again, really is nothing, nothing to do with anything that you did, but, you know, it's just because we were working on... If you remember, we said before to get the Werfel going, we needed to upgrade the version of PHP. Well, the lab guy upgraded the version of PHP, but we're, we're, we still have this problem stuck. So that is the desktop version. I can click around. I have two other pages, nothing earth-shattering. There's a members page, which, ooh, 
I wonder if my PHP error is, is screwing me up here. Let's view this in Firefox. I did not test this in Internet Explorer, but I was happy to see that it worked. But it's possible my PHP error is, is screwing up my layout. But anyhow, here is the page. And notice that the images are stacked, um, you know, in two rows of two. All right. So that is the desktop version of it. And then I have a credits page where I give credits to the stuff that I used, some of the code that I used. All right. Let's view this on a mobile device now. a mobile device. The assumption was in this case that I wanted to have a separate mobile site. All right. Again, we talked about the reasons why you would want a separate mobile site. I don't know if any of them really apply in this case, but that's our assumption is that we want a separate mobile site. And we want that mobile site to look like um, an app as opposed to a website. So let me open up the internet. And again, I get my stupid PHP error here, but if you can imagine, if you can pass that around, we have the, we'll, we'll pass around in a second, we have the uh, jQuery mobile uh, look to it. And if you look, interesting thing is, we didn't show this last week, but or last time, if you press on one of these links, you get a nifty little animation. The screen pushes to the side as, as you move to another page. Notice here that the images are stacked vertically as opposed to horizontally. And as you go around from page to page, you get that nifty little animation where it slides over, which is kind of cool. All right. And the home page has the PHP error. The other two pages aren't displaying the PHP error. But that's how you go. So that's the behavior, all right, the behavior of this. Let's consider first the normal situation. In other words, the situation we saw here. And towards the end of class, what I'll do is I'll talk about some of the exceptional situations, i.e., what happens if I'm on a mobile device that doesn't support JavaScript, for example. Uh, what happens if my page is misidentified as a uh, full device, a, a desktop device, when in reality it's actually a mobile device. So we'll consider those kind of odd conditions, the error conditions, at the end of class. Right now, we're just going to consider the, um, the, um, basic, uh, the basic situation. So, before we look at the code, let me talk a little bit about my directory structure here. Because the directory structure is important the way that I set this up. I have somewhere on my web server a folder called MJQ, and it contains an index.php, all right, and it contains a number of other folders. It contains, and I'm not going to write them, I'm just going to write them in the order that they come to my head. It contains a full folder, it contains a mobile folder. It can, contains an includes files folder. It contains a CSS folder. And it contains an images folder. All right. So index.php is in the application's root, so to speak. And then I have these um, other folders. Now, 
in the full folder is the following files. Index.php, members.php, and credits.php. So in other words, the three pages that constitute the site. Guess what? The same thing is in the mobile folder. An index.php, a members.php, and a credits.php. Now in this example, we have the same number of pages. We have the same pages. For every page in the full, we have a page in the mobile. We, we had mentioned before that that's not always the case. Maybe in your mobile version, you scale it down and, and only have a fraction or a portion of the pages. All right? That's fine, but it sort of works nice to, um, if you do have pages in common in both places, call them the same name. Just have them in different folders. These, that seemed to work out nifty for me here. All right? So, that's what I have in there. In here, I have a bunch of include files. What do you suppose are in those bunches of include files? What do you think is in there? Uh, well, usually the include files are like actual divs, actual pictures, actual content. Okay, but what's special about that content, or, or what's what, what, why, what, uh, let me rephrase the question. Why is, why is the stuff that are in the include files in the include files and not in the pages themselves? Simplifies it. Okay, and how does it simplify it? Because you only have to direct it to the source instead of rewriting the source. Repeat that, please. You only have to direct it to the source. Exactly. Of it. In other words, the, I, I guess what I'm looking for, and you are definitely on the right track, is this has code that is shared. This has common code. So this has common code that is shared between the mobile app, between the mobile app and the full app, between pages and the full app, between pages. If it's in more than one place, it's going to be an include file, so I don't have to change it in both places. So if you notice, when we go here, um, and look at uh, a, a content. This paragraph is in both places, the word for word. All right. Why is it in both places word for word? Because there isn't an include file, and that include file is simply pointed to. These images are in both places. All right, along with their proper captions and all that. So, common content is in these include files. CSS is the CSS, <laughs> oddly enough, and the images are the images that I use. All right. Let's talk about this page. Because if you notice, I have three index PHPs, right? That kind of seems like we have one too many index PHP, right? Because here's the full version's index.php. Here is the mobile version's index.php. What do you suppose this index PHP is responsible for? Probably like a glorified intersection. Okay. And what do you mean by that? Um, trying to interpret which one to run you to Exactly. Work. This one has the code for the user agent switching. Now, I didn't go out and register a domain for this. All right, I just put it on a folder on our server. But if I put in my domain, www.mydomain.org, all right, this would be the page that would come up. I even set our web server here so that when I navigate to this directory, it doesn't ask me what page, it automatically brings that up. So, 
again, within a web server, you can set default documents that it's going to look for when it accesses a folder. On our server, I set the default document for this folder, index.php. So you don't even have to type in the full URL. Just get to that folder. Well, if you can imagine me moving this to an actual domain, all right, when you navigate to that domain, this would be the page that you'd hit. All right? And you're absolutely right. This page is a traffic cop. This page looks at the request, all right, identifies if it's mobile or not, and either redirects them to this one or redirects them to that one. If it was on a domain, mm -hmm. then they could just, like, Google it, and they could directly access a members page. So how would the um, index page direct That's an that? excellent question. The question was, is what if someone Googled it, for example, and found the full members page on a mobile device, or found the mobile members page on a, a, a desktop device? This doesn't take into account that, all right? Um, were I doing this, were I to enhance this, for simplicity, I didn't consider that case. For simplicity, uh, I'm considering that everyone's coming in through the, the, the home page. Essentially, what you do, more than likely, is you, you duplicate this code in each of these pages to switch it back and forth and redirect it. But I, I didn't bother to do that, all right? But that's a great question. Really, really a good question. All right. Maybe that's something that I can enhance, you know, as this example moves forward. But, yeah, right now I don't deal with that. Okay. It's a great thing about being a teacher. You don't feel like doing something. You just say, I, I didn't implement that in this example. <laughs> yeah. For simplicity or for readability. <laughs> it's even true, but, you know, you can't do that on a job. Yeah. All right, let me download the code, because th the code is living on the web server, but I'm going to download a copy local so we can have a little bit of fun. One of the reasons, by the way, that I didn't do that, besides being lazy and not want to bothering and not complicating it, is I want to be able to view the mobile page on a desktop browser. Right? Because I want to demonstrate some things and view it, and if I did what... what you asked about and suggested that I wouldn't be able to do that. So that's that's part of the reason as well. All right. So let's go and let's pull up. Let's let's download the code. folder and it is called the example we will discuss on 10.3. And I'm going to go, I'm going to move it to this web server's home directory which is CINETPUB WW root. Actually, I'm going to move everything over there. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm not going to move the directory. I'm going to move the files individually over there. Now I'm going to go into the web server. And...
document. I'm going to go in here and add my index.php in the web server. Are we um, supposed to note how to um, get to this and everything? No. 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 Um, as a web developer, you shouldn't be afraid of web servers. All right? It, it's just you, you took uh, like three steps before I thought maybe I should start writing this. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, really, uh, what I would say, because it depends on the specific web software that you're, uh, web server you're talking about. The Apache would have different rules. So, you know, depending on whether you're in a, on an Apache web server or on IIS, you do it different ways. So, I, I'm not, you know, you, you aren't required to do that for this class. But, I guess what I'm saying is, knowing that, you can define a default file to say, this is when people access my site, this is a page I want to pull up, whether it be index.php or default.ispx or whatever. I think it's important to realize that you have that capability of configuring the web server. The exact steps that you have to go through to do that, uh, you can look that up if you need to. Okay. All right, so yeah, I, I won't worry about that. Now notice if I type in just localhost into my server, All right, this would be analogous to me just typing in the domain name. Do this in Firefox. Up comes. An error. You do not have permission, blah, blah, blah. God, I hate this. take a couple of, of shots at this and if that doesn't work we'll go to plan B. I first need to view the directory page with ACL configuration for this resource. We'll, if we need to view it, we'll view it off the web server. We'll just view the code, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, off of here. All right. So, here's the 
Here's the index. .php. Let's go and edit it in Notepad++. As I stated, all this does is this would be our site's home page. And all this does is the redirection. Now, if you can imagine, I could take this code, pop it into an include file, and put it on the very top of all my pages to redirect from one page to the other. All right? But again, I, I didn't go uh, and do that. So this page is a traffic comp. When I first go to my site, I hit this index page, and this index page, depending on the user agent, either sends them to the mobile version or sends them to the full version. Okay? Let's assume that we get to the full version. All right? Let's look at the index there. All right? what that's doing up there. All right. At any rate, here's our HTML file. Couple things I want to point out about this that are relevant to uh, what we've done in this class already. And I want to show you how it, it's used. Notice I have the two style sheets like I've done in the past. All right. And notice that they have, I have the base and I have the enhanced um, with a media query for if the minimum device width is a thousand pixels. So I'm doing this for big screens. I did that just to make it dramatic so um, we, could, uh, we could play with the resolution and, and get the mobile version to come up. So thousand is kind of a high number. Normally if you remember it's like 481 or whatever but I did it that way just for demonstration purposes. Now, let me ask you the question. Why would I need a media query here? We've already determined they're on a full uh, um, computer, that they're not on a mobile device. Because that other page redirected them here. So why do I have a media query here? What's the point of that? Why not just use the enhanced CSS file? Why do I still have the two CSS files? For a fallback. Okay. How so? Um, but is the enhanced one the mobile one? No, the enhanced one is a, is the full version one. And the base is the mobile. The base is the base. Okay. All right. And I'm not sure. Okay. What about the, the medium guys, the the tablets? Okay. Do they technically fall bigger than bigger than iPhone, but smaller than Jumbotron yeah. over there? Yeah, possibly. All right, that, that's, that's one good reason. The idea is this. I might want some level of consistency, no matter how people are viewing this. Like, for example, I might want to use certain fonts. And it doesn't matter if people are viewing this on an iPhone or, uh, you know, the Jumbotron or whatever. I want it to be Helvetica, Ariel, Sans Serif. So I can put those very basic kind of things that I want everyone to get. I can put that in my base. All right? And then I can put the stuff that I want for the desktop in the enhanced. Now, why not combine it all into one? Well, because guess what? In the mobile, I'm going to have the base, and I'm going to have then the mobile enhanced style sheet. All right? So I'm going to have the style sheet that adds some of the mobile stuff to it, but I'm still starting off with that base. So that I put, I break it down in two, if for no other reason, just so I can share that base between the mobile and the desktop. All right? I do it for another reason. Let's say someone gets sent to this page that's not really,